it's day 239 so I'm going to water with some residual diluted hydrogen peroxide that'll help oxygenate the roots and promote plant growth it'll kill any annoying bugs in there and also just clean up some you know rotting organic matter uh, the root ball towards the bottom smell kind of bad but that was the severed part from the old pot anyway uh, vines 2 and 3 faced stiff competition in their roots in this root ball from vine 1 because they have leaves that don't seem to recover as fast um, when everything starts wilting at this point it's more important to water the root ball on the top and center more often than it is to water all the way to the bottom which is useless this morning I was peeking through my blinds in the living room and I saw a hummingbird it was at this marrow stem that we're looking at right here and you know there weren't any flowers it was just sort of checking it out or maybe even licking it and I consider that to be a very good omen still on vine one and that looks like the beginnings of a flower that looks like the beginnings of two flowers as well this is overlooking the balcony so after the hummingbird came I went out on my balcony and I look closely at the marrow stems and this is typical of what I saw you know that's three female flowers with pre melons and nothing seems to be going wrong I'm expecting explosive melon growth hope springs eternal so I was just showing you that and if you look at that very same vine here you can see activity that's suspicious but it sort of looks like these things died you know they look like flower primordia but they just kind of shriveled up the same sort of appearance on a miniature scale of that dead flower over here I mean the dead melon so let me show you another marrow stem it sure looks like there are potential flowers in there if I zoom out you know that's a new vine offshoot a marrow stem that could potentially be very active uh, that's one too that's one you know, that's one this thing has been very prolific in vegetative growth and that could be a huge boon on vine 2 this happened within 48 hours so I'm not sure whether this all has to do with the great transplant and severing the roots and the shock that created or by not fertilizing anymore and transplanting and watering a lot instead so that's mostly vine 2 and I'm gonna have to start reeling some of these in and this is vine 3 it's so far I'm down there Okay, for vine one, a lot of them just overhang like that. And for vine three, it was a huge mess, basically consisting of one thick cable hanging down with like three or four offshoots. I rerouted them, like one here, one through here. Um, this one will take some time to grow a little more and adjust because the branch is off only there. So I'll loop that around here. And I kind of did the same thing with vine 2. You know, I brought this over the edge. I brought this over the edge. So these will write themselves and I'll plenty of time to do stuff. I mean, look how big these leaves are. It's like big as my hand. And some of the leaves that were hanging around here for ages are a little burn looking or sickly. I didn't spray anything on them. So, you know, I figure I'll... Oh, I'll do something, I'll spray some hydrogen peroxide and just to kill any residual spider mites I see. This is an example of an infested leaf. Uh, those are spider mites. I think they're probably dead, but you can see all these yellow spots. Uh, the leaves become mottled as all the spider mites, large and small, drink all the individual plant cells like juice boxes. more important to get the undersides of these leaves. A lot of these have never been sprayed before because they were so far over the edge of the balcony and this will definitely help. It's possible that the severing of 60 plus percent of the roots in the root ball from the 14 inch pot to this new 20 inch pot triggered some kind of last ditch effort in all three vines to reproduce but I think the more likely explanation is that I've read that over fertilization of the soil can inhibit flowering and produce explosive vegetative growth instead and we've seen evidence of that. So by putting a relatively small root ball 
and some other used dirt into two fresh volumes of potting mix that isn't over fertilized and watering a lot I've managed to lower the concentration of fertilizer in the pot.